Hi, God bless, and welcome everyone to Talk Straight Bible. This is Elsie Valentine with you all here in this day. As always, giving God all the glory, honor, and thanks for allowing us to come together here to spread the word of God, to edify each other, to learn and to hear his word, which is really good. Um, today, I want to speak to you about the roots of bitter fruit. I have been speaking on the fruit of the spirit. If you haven't heard the message, I always encourage, go back, listen to all the messages here that are spoken here on Talk Straight Bible because they're just all really good. Last week, I spoke on the fruit of the vine. And this week, I'm going to be reading from the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 31. Um, I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Version because as I was going through each translation, I always stick to the New King James Version because I really like that translation. Um, The Amplified Version, the way that this was worded, it to me, it just sounded really blunt. And so I said, I want to read this version. So it's Proverbs chapter 1, verse 31. And the word of God says, therefore, they shall eat of the fruit of their own wicked way and be saturated with the penalty of their own devices the word saturated means to completely satisfy oneself especially when it comes to food or a certain kind of pleasure it is to be a glutton to overly want more after feasting on a meal and you're still not satisfied you know you ever met a person like that they're still not satisfied but they hungry and they want more and they want more and then they eat so much and then they gag because they're full they're gluttons <laughs> and so if you met a person like this these are people who they lust they envy and they covenant after what does not belong to them and they don't stop until they get what they're after in the same manner this is how the enemy works he works in ways to cause you to fall into his plots into his schemes and his plans and his tactics he doesn't stop until he can take everything he can from you you know he's a thief and he comes to rob you of your joy he comes to rob you of your peace and in john chapter 10 verse 10 which many know this scripture It says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. You know, once you are enlisted in the army of God, all of his enemies become yours, becomes mine. And so the enemy, he doesn't stop until he can destroy us. He is a liar. He is a thief. And a thief will not break into your home if there is nothing valuable inside. That's why inside of you, there is something very valuable. There is life inside of you. There is the Holy Spirit that resides within you. Inside of you, there is value where the nine fruit of the Spirit, it's working within in you your house it has value to it that's why the thief he goes around prowling he goes around looking to who he can devour he surveys the premises he looks around and sometimes he just doesn't rob what's inside your home but he also comes to rob you of your thoughts The word thief is typically referred to a person who steals without anyone noticing. You see how he is? The enemy begins to rob you when you take your eyes off of Christ and you begin to get lazy. The passion you once had in your heart, it begins to die down. Everything bothers you. You begin to complain. You begin to murmur. And the and the root of those fruits that were once within you, which are the nine fruits of the spirit. Remember, it's one. It's not the fruit of love, the fruit of joy, the, no, the fruit of peace. No, no, no. It is one fruit working all together. What happens in when what happens when you begin to complain and murmur about everything? They begin to get bitter and rot and you begin to feel empty and barren because you're not looking no more for the presence of God. In this moment, you begin to ask the Lord, Lord, where are you? And in the story of Naomi, which can be found in the book of Ruth, Naomi, she went through this as well. She returns to Bethlehem without her husband, her two sons. And she tells the people in the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 20 to 21, 
do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. The word Mara means bitterness. Naomi, in her bitterness, a woman who was once full, a woman who had the love, the joy, the peace, the fruit of the spirit within her. Now she is putting the blame on God and faulting him for returning home empty. Is there any truth to this? Absolutely not. When her, her husband were there in, in, in Bethlehem, there was a famine. There was a famine in the land. And so they wanted to get out. And they looked to the land of Moab and everything looked it quite pleasing to the eye. How often do we allow our eyes to deceive us? You know, when I was growing up, my mom used to say to, to me and my siblings, don't eat with your eyes because what you have fixed your eyes on in that moment might not taste as good as it looks. It's like coffee. You know, coffee is really, it's really bitter and I love coffee. And in order to make your coffee sweet, you got to add a little bit of sugar to it. So the first thing that pleases your eyes at that moment, you want it. You need it. You got to have it. That's what happened with Naomi and her husband. They were in a place where they saw it was barren. It was empty. And so she left with her husband and her children. She was full. And when she got to this land of Moab, she lost everything and came back empty. And so she blames it on God. And that is not so the case. Many are like that in the days that we're living in. Quick to blame God. Quick to blame him. The word of God says in Proverbs twenty six twelve, Do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more help. There, I'm sorry. There is more hope for a fool than for him. And yes, we all need help in the Lord. A fool only has one hindrance to wisdom, and that is ignorance. The more confident a person is in their era, the more ignorant and dangerous they are to their situation. Because when bitterness begins to take root in someone's life, it starts with unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is a sin that causes bitterness in our life. And Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 to 32, he says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Paul was giving us his advice to stay away from bitterness before it gets a hold on us before it takes a hold of our personality. Forgiveness is the key point in letting go of anger, hurt, sadness, and disappointment. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15, it says, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the, of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness bringing up cause trouble. And by this, many become defiled. Once bitterness is planted into the heart of a person and takes its roots, it begins to grow in anger, in hostility, in unforgiveness, in hate. Bitterness is in an emotional state of feeling let down and it is hidden deep in the root of one's heart. I read this comment and it said that the root of bitterness is underground. It is easy to hide and, ca and camouflage. And what came into my thoughts was the story in Exodus 15. In verse 23, I want to read to you. It says, Now when they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. The people, they had been wandering in the desert for three days. They were thirsty and they were hungry. And there before them was a valley of spring water, which was camouflaged and looked pleasing to the eye. That's why you have to have discernment. Be careful what you see with your eyes. Sometimes it looks good, but it doesn't taste good. Because those waters there at Mara, they were bitter to the mouth. Those waters, they couldn't drink them. And so the people begin to complain. They begin to murmur against their leader, Moses. Bitterness is a sin that catches us by surprise. It begins by peeking through the surface as a seed of negativity, of thoughts, and of complaining and of murmuring. And as the people complain to Moses and of, against Moses, 
Moses went and took his complaint to God. And in verse 25 of Exodus 15, the Lord showed Moses a tree when he He cast it into the waters. It says that the waters were made sweet. The tree that makes those waters, the tree that makes those bitter waters sweet. You know, I I got choked up as I was studying this part because I could only think about what tree can purify. You know, what tree can make what was once polluted clean? What tree can make anything taste good? You know, what tree can do such a thing? What wood can do this? And what I thought was when Jesus Christ was crucified on that tree, on that wood, where all bitterness was nailed to, Jesus has made even the bitter water of death a doorway for believers, for us, for Christians to enter into everlasting sweetness. That's why when the two, the two were nailed on the cross, one said, you know, take me with you to paradise. And I'm only paraphrasing the answer to make all things that are bitter is forgiveness. Just as Christ forgave us, the answer to overcoming bitterness is the sweet name of Jesus. The seed of bitterness that produces rotten fruit of hate, of anger, of unforgiveness. Guess what? It was nailed to the cross over 2,000 years ago because Jesus freed us from all that bitter sin. And the cross, which Jesus Christ was nailed to, has made all the bitter water sweet. And this morning, I encourage you, do not let the roots of bitter fruit reside in you. Do not let them take captive. Do not let them take root in your heart because the heart is deceitful. Yes, it is. Jeremiah says it so well and in chapter 17 who can know the heart of a man only god so i pray in this morning that you begin to let god restore you cleanse you remove all that is bitter so that the nine fruit of the spirit of god begins to work in you that peace the love the joy the gentleness the self-control those sweet waters hallelujah because there are rivers of waters that are flowing through us that brings life and that is christ in us he gives us life the thief comes only to steal kill and destroy you but we are blessed because jesus christ came to give us life so i pray you are blessed in this day may the lord bless you keep you shine his face upon you and until we meet again amen god bless